So while I make decisions about what colour to paint the bonnet, um, I managed to, if you can see, a bit of damage just there, I managed to put the pin into the side of the rad and it started leaking. So that's prompted me now to get on with fitting the alloy rad. So first things first, I have to just, uh, drain the coolant, front bumper off, grill off, which I'm going to trim down a little bit anyway to get some more airflow in, and rip the rad out. And I got, haven't got all the pipe work yet to match it up, but I need to make some brackets so I can start doing that. Cheers, so, guys. we're now air-cooled engine, non-turbo. Um, coolant's out, looking very rusty. Going by the slug in the bottom of the rad. It was the old rad. So we got them side by side there. You can see this core is close to the same width but a bit taller and a lot wider, almost double the thickness, which is what's really going to help. We are lacking an expansion tank, so we're going to add one there to a from a Phase 2 XUD. That should do nicely. Right then, let's see how it fits. Cause it oh, she kind of fits! Um, I'm hoping we've got bonnet clearance, but we'll check that in a second. Um, we are going to have to do something with this pipe, I think. We might have to cut it, reduce it, and shorten it uh, because the standard pipe came to here. We'll come to that. Um, down the bottom, you can see it comes out straight, so we've got a 90 to go on that. And we can just plumb down there straight in. That'll be, that's dead easy. Hopefully, we can fit somewhere here um, our expansion tank and run the boost pipes over the top down to that big gap that there's now. Um, that too may be, be good for an oil cooler, but we'll see. Um, at the bottom, I'll show you what we had to do, just in case you want to do it. And I know Tom, with that, if you're watching this, you should know about Tom ZX. Epic thing that is. And he's running into the same issues as I am, really, with cooling. So we've cut an extra hole there for the left-hand lug. We just had to extend that one and extend that one. Now, that one's for the, the drain. There's a drain on the bottom. And this one is obviously for the right hand lug. We'll just tidy them up and put a bit of paint on them so they don't rust. Um, and then the lugs themselves are a bit shorter with rubber grommets on them. Like the originals, also cut down to get the height right. So there we go. So we'll plumb it in tomorrow now. And uh, make some brackets for the top which will go from here across the top and just bolt in nice and simple. Just two brackets at the top. Again with a nice little rubber grommet just to hold it steady. And job done. Oh yeah, go on. So the sun is setting on another day. Well, it will in about four hours' time, but that's the evening for me. Um, I just thought I'd show the progress, keep things documented for you all. Um, what to show you first? Um, so I've made some brackets up. Um, the radiator is a nice tight fit, uh, right up against the edge here, which is really good then, because obviously the airflow coming in doesn't go over the rad, goes through it. Um, so we put two brackets in, one on the left there, one on the right, um, with nice little grommets in there so they hold it steady but they're not going to rattle and they're not going to wear through and then we needed an expansion tank which is part of the brackets originally kind of sits over here somewhere I can't remember where so we made uh, a couple of little brackets uh, using a bit of using a bit of CAD that's what we used for cardboard air design for the brackets here as well obviously not finished off yet we'll um, once we've confirmed everything's in the right place we can then take everything off finish it um, paint it where necessary. So uh, then we've got a piece of pipe coming from uh, here to here. This is, we originally gone on the end of the rad. So what we'll have to do, we haven't done yet, is just take out 
that spring there so that it's just sealed but is a constant flow or an ability for it to flow in from the top of the rad into the expansion tank um, that help bleed out the rad as well because there's no bleeding points anywhere at the top. Uh, we've had to change the top pipe so we've used a couple of um, had a bunch of um, coolant pipe kicking around so we've uh, used two sections cut them off and a straight tube in between so I bought some 32 mil tube um, so that's good that's sorted obviously to be finished cleaned edges finished and then cleaned up made black again and then <clears throat> the pipe from the back here uh, this is a bleed pipe and it does run actually through there uh, it comes down here originally it went down and it would have gone into the rad kind of down there somewhere but into the side of the expansion tank which is where this gap is here it now goes in the bottom where on this expansion tank uh, this would originally fitted i took poured over some um the service box uh diagrams to ensure uh where all the pipes originally went with the expansion tank on a certain different phases with the xqds so that'll go into there there's a little joiner there at the moment obviously that'll all be clipped in um, and then this side here, that pipe's been cut off, unfortunately a bit short. Let's have to do something with that. Hopefully we can just put a pipe on with the Jubilee. Uh, that's the one I haven't really sorted yet. That's going to come across here, or straight down there, and it'll be this pipe. Um, and that's going to follow the main coolant pipe in through there. And then if we can try and give you an eye full of where it's going... You can just hopefully see, maybe you can't actually, it's a bit dark up there. But basically, if you can see the end of this tube moving, hang on, let's get you in closer. Yeah. And the top of the distribution block on the 2.1 was a blank. It took about 20 minutes to get off this blank. And that in the top of the distribution block is the ideal spot for this pipe here to go which will go into the top of the expansion chamber. It's perfect little spot for that. And then the bottom pipe, what we did is we, we already had a join here, because XUD 11 meeting XUD 9. So we've again used some original pipe work that we had kicking around. And we've come down here, because we've got no aircon pump, which is handy. And a little joiner in between. Got this little bit of rubber we're going to put on there to avoid it. It shouldn't be touching, but if it was to move. And that goes into the bottom pipe. And then the final bit is the heat exchanger which comes down here and originally went into the expansion tank or the rad into the bottom flow and then we're just going to stick a clap in there hopefully just enough room literally just enough room for that and then we can plumb that straight into the bottom of the rad and then to just maximize airflow at the front i want to leave the front of the rad open i'm going to stick it's not perfect but i'm going to stick the rad going to reverse the polarity and we're going to stick um, actually I can keep the polarity and just flip the fan now and stick the uh, fan here on this side we've got a bit of space here so it pulls the cold air through it's not perfect for sitting traffic but I don't normally have issues actually in sitting traffic the issue I have is getting the airflow and although it's only small it does cause a bit of restriction so I'll minimize that restriction there and that'll keep it nice and open for all the flow to go through so that's where we're at. That was a bit of a long update, nearly five minutes actually of me waffling. But I'm trying to document this so that any other XUD owners can do the same. I know it's a 2.1, but the principle here uh, will fit for a 1.9. Um, bear in mind, I'm, I was already using basically from that point there all the way around to the back of the block. That was all 1.9 coolant system anyway. So what I'm doing will fit the 2.1 the and the 1.9. So there you go. It does fit, it will fit, um, and the clearance is fine, I've checked that. So that's good. Um, and I'm having naughty thoughts now after looking online. That's a NOS Gloss Finish 4D carbon fibre, especially after I put the carbon fibre bonnet just over here, just to have that what it looked like. Naughty thoughts. So, that's where we're at. Um, I'll come back, hopefully this should be the same video, and it'll all be plumbed in. <laughs> yeah, right. Ha ha!